from Winterwood Studio. This week is going to be one of those mishmash videos. There's going to be some mixed media collaging. There's probably going to be some art supply openings. I have my first ever order from Jackson's coming this week. And I also have an order from Blick Art Materials coming as well. And we're going to be doing some work for Folktale Week. There may be other stuff mixed in. Who knows? It's Monday. I don't know what the week ahead holds. <laughs> so get yourself something cozy to drink and come on in and let's start this video. Okay, so you guys, it is... It is 10.58, Monday morning, November 13th. Today is the first day of Folktale Week, and I am not ready. <laughs> I have a story written. I never sketched out thumbnails. I have no plans for illustrations. I don't know anything that I'm doing, except that I do know <laughs> that I want to do mixed media collage for the pieces that I have planned for this week, and that's going to involve starting by painting some collage papers with some acrylic paints. <laughs> don't know how this week is gonna go. Uh, we'll see. I'm not ready. This may end up being really stressful. Um, I don't know if I'll do the whole week or not. I don't know. <laughs> Why don't I move you from here to here and we'll get started on making some collage papers and I will probably have a voiceover to talk to you guys about. Um, and I will see you again in a minute. <laughs> You guys, before I forget, I wanted to mention that we're going to be going through this book, How to Paint Fast, Loose, and Bold, as like an art book club over on my Patreon in December. Um, it's November 13th. Um, I think we'll be working through it on all the tier levels, although the higher up the tier, I think the more in-depth we'll go. Um, so if you'd like to work through this book and do like an art book club with us, please, please feel free to join my Patreon. All the info will list, be listed down below. Um, and if you want to just join for a month to do this, that's fine too. I hope to see you over there. <laughs> I'm going to switch over to the Blick sulfite paper and get out some acrylic. So I'm going to move these out of the way to dry somewhere else and I will be back. Okay, I'm not sure how much you can see off to the side, but I have all of my Liquitex Basics and all of my Winsor & Newton Galleria acrylics out. I don't have a mixing palette or anything like that. Uh, I just think I'm going to mix right on the paper. Um, and see what happens. So we're going to start, actually, let's start with this color. This is the Windsor & Newton Galleria um, Windsor Blue. And let's add a dab of burnt sienna to tone it down. And we'll see what happens. I have a general idea of like colors in my head from the story I wrote, and that is just what we're doing. Making some interesting textures. Okay, let's go put this one to dry and we'll move on to our next one. Okay, so now we're on to sheet two. I'm really impressed with this paper so far. This is the uh, Blick sulfite paper um, and I know oh you've heard me talk about um, Sandy Hester on here she paints like actual acrylic paintings on this paper and like even sells them on it um, so I was expecting to be impressed but I'm even more impressed than I thought I would be if that makes sense um, 
it just, it didn't buckle or anything. I was able to carry that whole sheet into the other room and it was fine. It was really, I was really impressed actually. This is a pretty pink. I think all of these colors are light fast. Um, it's been a while since I've used these acrylics and I know I got started with a set so I don't remember. These Windsor & Newton Winton watercolor, watercolors, acrylics are really good for um, learning. I think they're my favorite acrylics for learning and I still will use them for like backgrounds and stuff where I need lots of paint and I don't want to use my more expensive paints. Um, they're really pigmented for student grade and um, they blend well. The only thing about them is they do have a really glossy finish, which is not my favorite. Um, but other than that, they're really nice paints. Okay, so here you're going to see me put down a base layer of the Windsor Newton Galleria paint, and then I'm going to stencil right on top of the wet paint with more of it. Um, this is my absolute favorite paint for um, recommending to beginners in acrylic. If you were to ask me which paint to start with, it would definitely be this brand. Um, it's a good value for the price, and it has a very good level of pigmentation and opacity, and it's definitely, I would say it's better than a student-grade paint, but at a student-grade price. There are other paints out there that are also student-grade price, and they just aren't as good. Okay, so I've roughly got it sketched on my drawing paper. It doesn't matter because I'm going to cover this up with my collage. Um, and then I uh, just traced out some of these designs on some hot press watercolor paper. We're going to come back with these with wash later on. Let's get those out of the way. Okay, and now here's one of my sheets of collage paper that I made. I think it's it's dry. So now I'm going to figure out what I'm doing here. This one's not quite dry yet, but we'll see if we can't get some of these background pieces from it. So here is some of my collaging process. I do a mix of cut edges and um, ripped edges. I like the look of the ripped edges, but you don't want to do only ripped edges because then it doesn't make like that one edge special. Um, and then also sometimes you just need a sharp edge. But here you can see I'm assembling the pieces like a jigsaw puzzle and fitting them all together in a way. Okay, I'm going to be sticking things down with my uh, PB, PB, PBO, <laughs> the, my matte, um, my matte medium. Um, this is fine for non-water activated things like a dried acrylic. I'm not sure how it's going to go with the, like, the Derwent Graphitent, but I plan to try it anyway. <laughs> so, as I mentioned at the start of the video, I only got to do two days of folktale week. Um, I had a doctor visit on Wednesday, <clears throat> and I came home two hours later with stitches in my arm from where they had decided to biopsy um, a spot on my skin. And it was in my left forearm, only a couple inches away from my wrist, and it made it really hard for me to, like, rip and tear and hold the collage papers. Um, so I was not able, I, I, about the third day after having that done, I was feeling like I could have maybe held something. Um, but by that point, I was working on the watercolor paintings that you saw in the beginning, so... It is what it is, but I was pretty bummed that first day when I came home, I was feeling pretty pretty bad about not being able to do it. Um, I really enjoyed this. I would like to still finish the whole collage process that I started here. Um, I had a whole little story written and plans for all the rest of the days, um, and I still have all the collage papers I made, so I do think that's going to be a project 
I do this winter, um, even if, you know, obviously folktale week will be way over and nobody else will be doing it. But <laughs> if you want to see those, those will be up over on my Instagram sometime this winter, I think. And I'd also like to finish my paint tober that I wasn't able to finish. Um, so those might be that might be something I do this winter as well. So before I forget, you guys, you'll see this book cover popping up over here on the left, How to Paint Fast, Loose, and Bold. We're going to be doing it as like an art book club in my Patreon for the month of December. So if you want to come join us and do this for the month of December with us, we'd love to have you. Um, I just wanted to tell you before I forget, I can't remember if I talked about it later in the video or not. Um, here you can see I'm using the Derwent Graphitint to do some of the little elements that I did in my um, first day for Folktale Week. I had wanted to originally cut all these out of the papers, but I realized at this point that there was no way that I'd be able to do that and still have it done in time for the end of the first day. Uh, so I did some little um, sketching and drawing here on the paper with the Gra Derwent Graphitint. Sorry for all the background noise, you guys. I'm not sure if it's picking it up or not, but my family is home with me. Um, it is, we're still on Thanksgiving vacation. So um, sorry about that. It is actually Friday morning and I'm trying to finish this up quick and hoping that it will render and upload and be up before tomorrow morning. <laughs> so wish me luck. <laughs> um, anyway, so I'm just cutting these out. I used the Derwent Graphitant on the houses and then I wanted the girl to be a little bit brighter. So I used my Daniel Smith watercolor paints for that. Um, and now I'm just cutting them out and I'm going to stick them on. I didn't love how this first day turned out. I really liked the background. I didn't love the girl or the tree, or the, the, the little village all that much. Um, I, yeah, I just didn't love it. Um, but I did love day two, which will be up shortly, but I think before we get to day two, I will pop in, and there will be the Blick Art Hall opening, um, and I will talk a little bit about what's going on. It'll be, like, Tuesday morning, and I'll be talking about it. Also, I was using the Elmer's glue sticks for this, um, the matte medium, which is what I would have preferred to use, was not drying fast enough for me to be able to do a whole collage in a day. Um, I would have ultimately have liked to just take my time and, like, let it dry overnight before I came in with the, like, the Caran d'Ache, um, Neo Color 2s and my colored pencils. Um, as it was, the matte medium, like, it balled up a little bit in certain places and then didn't dry and like in the mountain when I tried to go over it over it with the colored pencil to give it some texture it ripped a little bit um <clears throat> this was definitely something I should have you know been able to plan ahead of time and work slowly uh but I couldn't because I was doing my own challenge the paint over challenge so it worked out how it worked out I'm learning lots this year <laughs> like you can't host your own challenge and participate at the same time and that there's more work to do before and after the challenge than there is even on a daily basis because because of all the sponsors who sponsored prizes and I had to ship them all out and uh send the appropriate like <clears throat> I don't know proof I don't know if it's called proof I don't know, but I had to like send certain things to the companies to show them like what I was doing. And it was a lot of work. <laughs> um, <clears throat> I think I'm my voice is going a little bit. So I think I'm going to put on some relaxing music here and you can watch the end of the collage process. And if you would like to skip to day two and the Blick opening that starts at 17 minutes and 30 seconds.
it is Tuesday morning. I don't know if you can see the mess. I think I've mostly hit it. <laughs> it's Tuesday morning. Um, again, I think it's around 10. It's 10.03. Um, I have not started for today yet. Um, I felt a little stressed out yesterday. The Making the collage papers was super fun. But then when it got time to actually do the collage, um, I don't know. I just started to feel really stressed out. This is the finished piece. Sorry, Miss Farita's making a lot of noise over there. I have to take her out. Maybe I can get some better footage here and stick it in. This isn't focusing for some reason. Okay, this is the finished piece. Um, it was fun and yet frustrating. <laughs> I liked making the acrylic um, collage papers a whole lot. The acrylic, I used a mix of my Winton acrylic and my, um, man, sorry about this lens, you guys. It's having a really hard time. I'm, it's like I said, it's November 14th now. Um, I'm going to look for a replacement lens for um, Black Friday and see if I can't get a replacement lens on a deal or something. Um, it's clearly going downhill. It was, uh, for those of you who remember, I broke my, my lens, my good lens, back in, I think, early spring. Um, and I bought a used one on eBay, which lasted for most of the summer, but now it's fall and it's, it's not, the auto focus isn't working good and the color adjustment and all that. Um, so I will probably try to get a new lens. So sorry about that. Um, anyway, I had a lot of fun making the collage papers. Um, the acrylic is kind of shiny. The Liquitex basics were less shiny than the Winton. And this is one of the things I don't love about acrylic is sometimes how shiny it is. But I also don't want to waste like my Golden So Flat or my Turner um, gouache, acryl acrylic gouache on these. So I will keep going with the cheaper acrylics. Um, well, I would assume I probably talked about some of my issues in the voiceover while you were watching me. So I, I won't get back into them. I will say that I am expecting the package from Blick Art Materials today, the tracking number says today, and the one from Jackson's tomorrow. Um, so that opening should be coming up pretty quick here. I've had a rough couple of weeks. Um, for those of you over on, on Patreon, you probably already know I had, I had my first real issues with some people where I had to block and ban people, and that was really hard for me. Um, I mean, I kind of expect that sort of stuff here on YouTube, but like for patrons, like I start to think of those people, you know, all of you guys, I start to think of my patrons as like my friends and, you know, we talk and it's nice and you don't really expect like issues with that. So it was, I had some issues the last two weeks and it was kind of hard. Um, this, this whole folktale week was supposed to be my fun thing to like relax and yesterday wasn't relaxing. Um, so we will see how it goes. Um, I'm also a little worried about finishing out the week. Today is Tuesday. I have a doctor's appointment tomorrow that may or may not go in a direction I don't want it to go. Um, so that might complicate things too, but for now... Let's, I think I'll walk the dog, <laughs> and then we will get started on day two of Folktale Week. Today is ink, so let's walk the dog, <laughs> and then we'll do uh, day two. <laughs> Okay, you guys, so it's Tuesday afternoon. It is 2.32, my first layer of glue on my collaged uh, day two folktale thing is drying. Um, and FedEx just came. This is my box from uh, Blick Art Materials. And I thought we could open it um, and take a break from the art for a minute. I'm thinking by the time the Jackson's box comes, this video may be too long. That might have to go in next week's video, but we'll see. Um, so now would be as good of a time as any to say that I have decided when Folktale Week is over, um, 
I am going to concentrate on getting together application materials for the Pastel Society of America. So um, I can put, I'll put a link to Pastel Society of America down below um, in case anybody else is interested in applying. The next uh, application date is the second Monday in January. So if you want to apply, you have to have your materials in by then. Um, and you have to have five pastel pieces done from reference folders you take yourself. Um, you can't use like stuff from Pexels or Unsplash. So I'm going to shoot for that. Um, I will say you only get to apply once per year. They have um, four application periods throughout the year, but you only get to apply once per calendar year. So if I get to January and my five pieces aren't good enough, then I'm not going to apply. I will uh, wait <laughs> um, until the next application period after that. But these materials and the things that are coming from Jackson's are stuff I need to do that application process. So let's open this up and see what's in here. I like when they send me catalogs. <laughs> uh, this is their probably their Christmas catalog. <laughs> um, I love to read these at night with a cup of tea. <laughs> you know, because I love art materials. <laughs> Um, let's see. This is probably the UART. I got two different sizes of UART paper. Um, this is probably the 9 by 12. Um, I really like UART paper for pastels. I hope you can see me. Oh, I'm so pale in the camera again. Or the color is off. There, that helps. Okay, so UART paper is probably my favorite paper for soft pastels right now. Um, I want to experiment some more with pastel matte. That's my favorite with pastel pencils. Um, I would like to try some more experimenting. Yep, here they are. Ten sheets of 400 grit in natural. Um, and then I think I got a bigger size too, so hopefully that's in there. There's a box within a box, and I know what this is, but I want to save this for last. Ooh, and it's heavy. Oh, everything's a mess because I'm in the middle of, you know, Starting for day two of um, folk tale week. So there's scraps of paper and scissors and glue sticks and here we go. Okay, and then I also got, they were nice enough to say product underneath, <laughs> uh, several sheets of the 400 grit. I can't remember if I got three. I think I got three in the next larger size, which I think might be 12 by 18, I think. So there's three there, so I was right on that. And I have a, um, a different envelope. I'll stick them in to be safe. And then, <laughs> Unison. Here, let's see if you can, oh, the camera. There we go. Unison. Um, this is one of their eight half stick sets. Um, See if we can open this here so you can see it. I'll take the little top layer off. It is their Natural Earth eight stick set, uh, half stick. Um, and if you want to see pastels, wait until the box from Jackson's next week. Because holy moly, if you like pastels, you're going to want to see that. <laughs> um, I may still stick it in this video. We'll see. We'll see how long uh, this all is. <laughs> All right, now I am really excited about this. Um, I really hope it works. <laughs> I think I might be opening it upside down. So I have a small studio space. I have not got my big new studio built or anything like that. We're not even starting to build it. So I did open it upside down. Ooh, it's oily. Hmm. So, I need a solution for storing my pastels where they're easily accessible, and I think this might be it. I don't know if you can see that. This is the three drawer, drawer set. It was thirty-four dollars, I think. They they stack. I hope they're deep enough to hold them. I I asked and they said they were. So. Um, 
I hope I don't have to take the foam out. I might have to. We'll see. Let's try putting these, a couple of these brown ones in here. Here, let's tip you down so you can see. Okay, so let's see if we can fit these in here and shut the door. Um, the hand rolled pastels are pretty thick. So I'm really hoping that this works as a storage solution. It does, but barely. And this brown one might be too fat. That brown one is too fat. Um, I'm sure if I take the foam out, it would shut. Oh, you'd have to take the whole thing apart. That one, just that one is too fast. <laughs> um, yeah, okay, so my take on this is hand rolled pastels, the unison fat pastels, don't fit with the foam. Um, let's see how easy this would be to, oh, they just come right, right out. I should have put them in order. So I know which ones were. So I'm assuming. Let's just try it. I like this. Okay. Okay, so if you want them to fit, you need to take the foam out, apparently. Um, this is kind of oily. I'm a little worried about putting my pastels in here right away. I think I would like to wipe this down with like a, a damp cloth uh, before I would put my pastels in here. Um, I'm a little worried about the amount of oil. Uh, but that's not a big deal. That's just something that just time will take care of. It'll absorb. But I mean, you can see there's quite a bit of oil on there. Um, and it's, it smells like linseed oil, which I like that smell. But if, if you don't, <laughs> be aware. Whoa! You know, I might, I'm going to try one more time to put these in without taking the FOMO. I have a set of drawers from Amazon that my hand rolled pastels fit in, um, but it doesn't have foam. Um, I was kind of hoping to have it work with the foam. Let's let's try one more time because I pressed down on it and it's that seemed to work better. Let's just try and see. Okay. to get it lined up oh okay so it does fit if you press down on the drawers as you pull in and out however if you don't it might get stuck so press down and pull out okay got it dirty already all right I'm gonna take my pastels out but I'm super excited about this they stack so I imagine I'll get more as I need it I want to sort them by brand so I can keep track of what I have. Um, but I want to be able to just pull drawers out and have pastels ready to use since I can't, I don't have like the space to have those big human boxes or whatever the pastel artists have. So this is going to be my solution. And I think that was a great solution. And it's pretty nice for only 34, I think it was 34 99. Um, so that was everything that was in that box. And I'm going to get back, I'm going to get back to work. <laughs> <laughs> and we'll see about whether or not there is time to show the Jackson's box or not.
And then once I'm done with folktale week, it's going to be really fun to sort all my new pastels into the boxes and my old ones too. Oh, and I have, I, I'll crunch down so you can see me. I talked to Blick um, and they got me the light fastness ratings of the Sennelier pastels, which is great. They are not all light fast. I'm going to tell you that right now. I am waiting to hear from the, not Blick, but the actual distributor, whether or not I can share that light fast rating chart on my YouTube channel. Um, however, even if they say no, uh, you would be able to just go to Blick. I, I went to Blick on Instagram and just asked them for it, and a couple days later they had it for me. So if they don't let me share it for whatever reason and you want the light fastness rating of the Sennelier Soft Patel Pas Pastels, I suggest going over to Instagram and sending a direct message to Blick. Okay, back to work. <laughs> Okay, everybody, so it's time to start day two uh, in the interest of less stress. So yesterday when I did this one, all of it is collaged. Even the background is collaged. Um, and I think in the name of less stress, I'm going to just paint in the background of this with my acrylics first and collage on top of that. So I'm going to do, um, the word today is ink, and I have an inky nighttime sky planned and a forest floor so to make it easy I'm just going to paint in I'll do a little of the Mars black I'm using the Liquitex basics for this I've been using a mix of um, these with the Winton um, the Windsor and Newton not Winton why do I keep saying that that's their um, <laughs> that's their oil student grade line. This is acrylic, so their student grade line is Galleria. Um, I've been using a mix of the Liquitex Basics and the Windsor & Newton Galleria acrylics. The Galleria acrylics are just a little bit shinier than the Liquitex. Um, you know what? Also, to keep things just a little bit neater, let's... We'll move things around as needed, but we'll start like this. Um, okay. So we're going to do this blue-black night sky. Um, what was I saying? Oh, the Liquitex basics are a little less shiny than the Windsor and Newton Galleria, although I think that the Galleria is a better quality student grade paint than the Liquitex Basics. Um, so actually this is in my best interest. I'm going to save the um, Windsor & Newton for actually painting, like when I have a background or something and I need a, a cheaper paint but a better quality. Um, I'm going to save them for that and use the Liquitex Basics for this where it doesn't matter because I'm going to be collaging on top of it. Okay, so I sketched in my characters here. Um, I'm just lightening these up. This is uh, a mixed media sketchbook. Um, I don't know what else I'm putting in the page yet, but I do know I want to do these. So I'm lightening these up, and then I'm going to take... Um, my terracotta color erase color race pencil color race and just go over these um, marks a little bit I think I'm gonna do these in acrylic wash and then I think I might take a break for lunch and come back and cut them out and figure out what I'm doing from there. 
Okay, I thought about doing these, well, I really wanted to do these all paper, like, even the characters, like, a bit for her dress, and a bit for her arm, and a bit for her face, and in the interest, again, of not being stressed, that's not going to happen. <laughs> um, I'm using the Turner Acrylic Wash for these because I... Um, don't want the gouache to reactivate if I decide to do a wash of watercolor on top later. So let's get started here. So, I got these base shapes painted, and now I think it's time to collage everything else, so I think I'm going to clear up the paints for now, although I may come back with some of these um, gouache later, and we will get some scissors and my different collage papers, and we will get to work. Okay, so... I don't know how much you can see, but these are the collage papers that I think I'm going to be working with. Um, I'm not quite sure how I want to do this, except that I know I want to have lots of trees, but some sky visible. I think I'm going to start with gluing this stuff down. Um, so I kind of have to do it in order. I guess let's start by gluing this tree. I wanted to use matte medium to do this, um, but it ended up taking too long to dry, and since I can't, I didn't work ahead, I'm using the glue stick that I had on hand, which is one of my kids' school <laughs> glue sticks. But we do what we have to do, I guess. Ooh, speaking of glue sticks, ooh. Line this up. Just right. Okay. 
Now before we move on to the fox, let's see if we can't do some, first I'm going to go wash my hands, I'm sticky. Alright, let's start by where are my little scissors? Okay, you guys, sorry about that. My SD card was full. Hopefully you didn't miss too much. Um, uh, let's see. Continue on, I guess. So I did have a lot of fun doing the collage. Um, it's definitely something I want to do again. I really do want to finish uh, the planned rest of the images I had planned for Folktale Week. Um, and I wrote a whole little story to go with it. I think I maybe talked about it already. This video ended up being filmed and edited and the voiceovers and everything done over like a two-week period. Um, I think there's a word gap there, sorry. Anyway, uh, we had people staying with us for the whole week leading up to Thanksgiving. So I had to work around, you know, people and schedules and responsibilities and all of that. Um, but I really did like doing this collage and I do hope to finish the rest of the series uh, sometime this winter. I'm hoping things will slow down a little bit now. Um, although we're coming up into, you know, holiday season and I have a, one of my, my kids has a birthday right before Christmas. So we'll be doing that. So it's probably not going to slow down all that much until January. <laughs> um, I'd like to try some different collaging supplies. I'm not sure if you're supposed to use Elmer's glue, uh, but it was a lot of fun. Um, right now I'm on a big watercolor kick um, and I'm having a lot of fun with that. Uh, I'm kind of grateful that I got back into it, I guess. Even though I didn't want to get stitches in my arm, it did lead me back into the watercolor, and I had been feeling kind of burnt out with watercolor. Um, I was doing mixed media watercolor before, so this uh, lately I've been doing just pure watercolor, and something about it felt very healing to me. Uh, it ended up being what I needed. Um, there was lots of, you know, just getting in the flow, I guess, with the watercolor where you don't think, and it's not stressful, and you just zone out. And it's just you and the paper and the and the flow of the watercolors and no thoughts and no worries and nothing like that. And it was very relaxing and very therapeutic. And um, I'm probably going to be doing more of it. Um, yeah, I'm definitely going to be doing more of it. I already drew out a sketch for another watercolor that I'm hoping to start Monday. Uh, it is... Um, a Friday afternoon at 1.37 p.m., and I'm obviously still doing the voiceover on this very long video. Uh, I'm really hoping that it goes up in time for the video tomorrow. <laughs> in fact, you guys, I realized I forgot to film, like, an outro, you know, where I say, like, thanks for being here with me and everything. Uh, so that's not going to be at the end of this video, I guess. Here I'm using the Neo Color 2... Uh, and the Carrie Nash colored pencils to put in texture and details and like some back background atmospheric type stuff. Um, this was a really fun process too. Not as therapeutic as the water watercolors have been for me lately. Um, mostly I think because this was a brand new medium for me. I had never tried collaging before. I mean, maybe when I was a really young kid, but this was my first attempt at collage as a grown-up, um, and I had a ton of fun, but I think it was kind of stressful, and I definitely wasn't zoning, zoning out because I was thinking and planning and trying to figure out what I was doing and all of that because I had never done it before. Um, I think that once I know what I'm doing, it would be easier to zone out. And um, I guess since I didn't film an, in, uh, an outro, I'll say thanks for being here with me today. If you want to join my Patreon and do the December book club with us, all the info will be down below. Um, we'd love to have you over there. Um, and then also the watercolor tutorial of the Rainbow Laura Keats is going to be up on my Patreon for the video level tier. That is the student artist tier. And that will be up on November 28th or 29th. I can't remember which. And also, if you want to join before our live Zoom call, where we'll have a live pastel pencil class, that is still available as well. Um, that will be, 
I think, November 29th or maybe November 30th. So there's plenty of time still to sign up. And here is my finished piece. Happy creating, everybody. Mm-hmm.